The battle for who becomes the next governor of the all-rich Bielsa state has taken a new dimension with the conclusion of political parties' primaries. Already, the political uh, gladiators in Bielsa state are lobbying for their respective party candidates to succeed during the polls. The incumbent governor, Senator Duidiri, uh, has already secured the ticket of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, while a former governor and the immediate past minister of state for petroleum resources, Chief Timipre Silva, uh, also clinched the ticket of the All Progressive Congress APC. Others who have emerged as governorship candidates of their respective political parties include Udeng's Eradiri of the Labour Party, Waibodei Subiri of the All Progressive Grand Alliance APGA. But for the PDP governorship primaries, it was the first time in the state that the party produced a candidate unopposed as nobody contested the ticket with Governor Dewey Deary. He recently said his administration deserved a second term, term, I beg your pardon, based on its performance in the last three years plus. Now, joining us to discuss this live is Olufemi Lawson, a pro-democracy activist. Thank you so much, Mr. Lawson, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening to the Plus TV family. Yeah. Great. Good evening, my dear. It's interesting that... Um, just in, in, in no time, three years plus has come and it's almost gone for the Dewey Dewey um, administration. And many would wonder, what are the things that the, the Dewey Dewey administration can point to on its um, scorecard to say that this is what uh, it, it would be, um, let's say, um, doing better on or bettering upon, uh, for the want of a better way to describe it? Because you know what they say, one good term deserves another. But what has he done that's outstanding? Um, that would make the, uh, the Bielsa people want to bring him back, even though his party has given him the flag? Well, I think in responding to that, the most important thing for me, as somebody who have, in the last uh, 14 years, act, have actively you know, followed the political trajectory of Bielsa State, I've only lived and done businesses in Bielsa State, and coupled with the family relationship and other factors that have made me, you know, follow by state politics actively. I think one of the sig most significant factors that uh, the candidate of the PDP, Governor Duhidiri, will be bringing into this election is the fact that for the first time in the history of by state politics, we are having a situation where we, buy, we are just about six months or then about the governorship election, and there is stability, there is peace, and in Bayesa, it looks so much like, you know, a governorship election is not coming, especially if you have lived in Bayesa, and you were in Bayesa in 2011, while we were preparing for the 2012 governorship election between the then PDP candidate and other candidates. If you were also in Bayesa, in 2016, the year after President Buhari became the presidential candidate and president of Nigeria under the All Progressive Congress, where we had the then PDP candidate, former governor, Siriake Dixon, contesting election, Bayesa was at the center stage. Bayesa was under global attention because of, you know, actions of politicians and the uneasy tension that characterized but has that changed? I don't think that has changed. Has it changed? We saw what happened during the general elections time and time again. Has that really changed? Yeah, that is what, why I said this time is very peculiar. This time seems to be different. And I think what is practically responsible for this is leadership. Leadership in the sense that today, I think Bayesa is privileged to be under the leadership of a governor who has prioritized governance above politics. In the past, we have seen leaders, not only in Bayesa State, but across states of Nigeria, who prioritize politics above governance. But despite being six months away from a very crucial governorship election, Governor Duyediri has continued to prioritize governance, consistently remained to delivering on his mandate based on his first time promises to the people of Bayesa State, rather than being engaged in political activities that would destabilize the state. And that is why, as I speak to you tonight, Bayesa is as calm as you can ever imagine, to the extent that you will not even believe that there have been governorship primaries 
just like you alluded to in your introduction, in Bayesa State as we speak. All right, let's talk about the key players here. Yes, your governor is running on the platform, or the governor, I beg your pardon, uh, the ADV is running on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. But then let's look at the man he's running against and some others who he's also um, running against. But let's start with the um, former Petroleum, uh, Minister of State for Petroleum, um, Mr. Silver. Now, we know that your governor, um, Mr. Uh, Diri, it, this is his first time. He's a first timer. Uh, yes, you are saying, I mean, singing his praises and saying he has done a lot and he deserves a second tenure and that he's bringing a, t a totally new dimension to things. But let's look at Mr. Silver. This is not his first rodeo. Um, does Diri, Diri stand a chance against someone who's not been there just one time? He's been there before. And he's returning uh, for a second time. Uh, are you sure that he would be able to stand a chance? Well, is it one of the most important, you know, factors that uh, the people of Bayasa and Nigerians are looking forward to in this election is the fact that beyond other candidates, most importantly, the candidates of the now third force, the Labour Party, and of course other political parties that are participating in this election. We're having candidates from two major political parties, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, and the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, who have served the states for at least four years before we are going into this election. Governor Deidere has been in the saddle for over three years now. He'll be completing his first four years very soon before, not after this election. And we also have the candidate of the governing All Progressives Congress, Mr. Timmy Presilva, who has been governor of this same state. Now, beyond the participation of the you know other political parties, the Labour Party and other political parties that are participating in this election, Bayesans have a critical you know decision to make in choosing between two major political actors particularly from the major political parties of APC and PDP who have governed by state before. And this is going to be purely based on not the political campaign promises that Governor Doe Eduri made campaign promises for the people of Bayesa State in 2020, you know, being the basis for the outcome of the election. And the elections where former governor Timmy Presiva also participated, also, he also made promises. I haven't governed by SSC for four years, with Governor Dresden I haven't also governed by SSC for single term now. Biasas are going to be judging these candidates on the basis of their pedigree. What have we witnessed in Biasa State in the last four years? What has been the pedigree of Governor Dresden when you talk about peace and stability, when you talk about governance, when you talk about responsibility of government to its people, for those of us who are very familiar with Bayesa, for those of us who have done businesses in Bayesa, who have relatives in Bayesa, who have been part of the political atmosphere of Bayesa, are we looking at a situation where we have to access to the, these two major political party candidates on the basis of who the life we lived as Bayesans or as citizens of Bayesa? indigenously, as the case may be, for my brothers and sisters who are natives of this okay. state, in the last, in the, in the four years of both candidates, for four years now, we have a state that is not in the news for violence, for militant activities, for police brutality, for violent security agencies attack. Or are we going to go back to the era where, you know, governance was like you know, a, 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 a mirage where nightlife never existed in the state capital, where citizens became so afraid of their government. Okay. To the extent that government were given very funny and terrible nicknames. Uh, so the choices are very clear. Femi, let me, let, 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 me, let me come in there. Bios State is one of the smallest states, surrounded by water, by the way. Um, so it's prone to a lot of flooding over and over again. Um, that's one thing on the other hand. I mean, your governor uh, has been criticized over and over about the flooding issue, but I don't want to go to that dimension. There's a lot of money that Bielsa State receives 
um, every month, if we were to take a tour of Bielsa State, which I have done, by the way, so don't, you're not going to tell me any stories, um, can we see any difference between how Bielsa State was under Siraki Dixon uh, and under his past um, predecessor and under him right now. I remember the last time I went to Bielsa, I was wondering why he had just one street, one road, one long road. Uh, Bielsa has not seen the level of development he should see as a state that has that much revenue coming into its account every single month. Can the governor tell us that he's been able to develop that state with all the monies that he keeps getting every year? Well, I think one of the important thing that the Doedri administration has been doing in Bias, and I'm not a spokesman of the government, that is important. I'm speaking as somebody who has been actively involved in the political activities of the state, who have lived in the state and doing businesses in the state. Let me state this first and foremost. Whatever you see happening in Bayelsa State today is happening for the first time, not only in Bayelsa State, in Kogi, Benue, Kebi, and some other states that are now being affected by the realities of the climate change that we're experiencing as a global community. While you never have... Like I said, Femi, I'm climate. so sorry to talk over you, Femi. I'm not going to dwell on the flooding. I'm talking about developmental strategies undertaken by the Dury administration with the level of revenue that comes into the state, not flood. It's a natural disaster, of course. I actually have to take that response from the point of, you know, you mentioned the issue of flooding, which was one of the things that brought by ESA into the news in the current, you know, in the past couple of months. The truth is that when you talk about development, you have to talk about how well the people have been developed, not just about the number of roads, bridges, and, you know, probably boreholes like some governors are doing that have been done in this state. We are talking about how well has the government been able to develop the capacity of its people to be productive. And you must give that to this administration. The people of Bayelsa are today productive basically because there's a leadership in the state that has prioritized the people's development above in development of individuals, pol politicians, and maybe friends of governors and families. Unlike in the past, where social life, economic life, and other critical sectors of the state were in the yards of a very few Kaba, mm -hmm. who do not only terrorize the state, but made you know, social activities, economic activities, practically impossible in the state because of this security situation in Bayelsa State. The history of, you know, the operation of Amutangbe, the also, also of notorious court activities in Bayelsa State, it's, it's, it, this is not what is known to me. Okay. This is a matter of public knowledge. It's available for okay. you on the news website on Google. What used to be the story of okay. Bayelsa State some years before... You know, 20, 2012, from 2012 to 2016. We got to go. <laughs> so the idea is that now we are looking at a state where relatively you can drive in even at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., economic prosperity. All right. And as I speak to you, for the we, first time in the history of the state, we have more people from okay. all parts of the country resident in Bahasa State today like Danny has ever been in the history of the state. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Femi Lawson. I'm sure that there's going to be more conversations around this elections and what the governor has done, and of course, around the people who are running against him. Maybe we'll have this conversation again. Lou Femi Lawson is a pro-democracy activist. Thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure. All right. Well, that's the show tonight. And before we leave you, we'll leave you with the highlights of the week. In case you missed some parts of the program, we'll bring you a rundown of all the conversations we've had this week. Have a beautiful weekend. I am Mary Anacom. Good evening. Hardly would you find a senior advocate of Nigeria. And I mean a senior advocate of Nigeria of many years of experience at the bar and does not have assets abroad. And does not have assets abroad. Some of them actually charge in, in, in hard currency. Where are they going to keep the money? Well, our politicians are the most of the competition to some of the problems we have in this country today. Because they see politics as a, as a very lucrative business. Some of them see politics as a profession. See, I'm a politician. 
How can you say politics is a profession? Politics is not a politician. It's not, it's, it's, it's not a profession. In that times, but here in Nigeria, we see politics as a profession. And they see it, it is a do or die. You must grab it either by hook or by crook. And in that process, they put about moral values, put about spiritual values to the background. And what they are concerned is how to achieve it by hook or by crook. And in that process, and they see violence as utilized using violence as a legitimate means. And they help these young men, and the young men, the young men go out for their perceived enemies that are identified by their masters or principals. And at the end, they cause havoc and mayhem, kill innocent people, and they continue in the act of violence. They even get these young men dropped. They get dropped, they get them dropped, and they go out. All they go, they know is violence, to this destruction. So there are so many, if, if, if this political class, if we make politics less lucrative, political appointments, less lucrative, I know that it's see, let me inculcate the culture of service. Service, service to humanity, service to our country, and service to, to God. We tend to ignore what people say, what they do, how they respond to questions, when they are running. We help them to cover up. So we create heroes when people are running for office. And then people will come out and start to explain what they will do. We say, ah, why are they just talking, just talking. So the issue is that I listened to President Buhari, what he said by himself. I knew that he would not do too well because of the fact that desires and wishes are different from you understanding. And while he sat down on that throne, we were understanding the problems more than him. We were interpreting the problems more than him. So, it's the end. What, what we owe him now is just a blissful retirement and hope this person who is coming will not fall into the same uh, uh, oblivion where you are sitting down there and people are whispering to you what to say. You don't know what you are going to say. Um, you just announce people's name. You cannot control them. You cannot follow them. You are not receiving data. You are not reacting to data. Those are the problems. I think President Buhari became president 30 years behind time. Increment of wealth from just about 70 something naira to 90 something naira or thereabouts in 2012. And there was protests across the country. But under the Buhari administration, we have wealth increased from 165 naira to 700, 600, 500 naira. And people come on the street. So if some of those steps we have taken, we would have gone a long way to you know, dense the image that is trying to paint now. Tense has happened under this administration. And these are issues that threaten security in the country. So to a very large extent, I won't say that uh, the president performed beyond what others could do. But to a very large extent, I believe that there was some reduction in the way that uh, attacks were happening from across the country compared to under former President Bullock Ebele to Jonathan. So I wouldn't just uh, you know, agree with him that under the current administration that uh, it is something we should celebrate 100% because there is a kind of uh, high rating of the Nigerian military from this seventh position to the fourth position all that. The call, the call for a, a democratic transformation of Sudan system of governance has been the call for many years that resulted to many coup and military government leading Sudan. So this, this call for a democratic transformation is going to continue creating more problems uh, in Sudan until they have really realized this aspiration. Number two, I think the control of power, I mean the, the two general now seem to be uh, uh, running after uh, controlling uh, the system and the government and even the resources uh, management of the country. So it, 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 it is going to be uh, really discussed and, and talk about these two things because as soon as one is leading the country, the resource management and exploitations will be in the hand of one of them. Although they might not be committed to the the democratic transformation, they will invest very much in positioning their power, having resources in their hands.